book for three weeks now. And uh, so let's start by talking about what is hitting us in this book. I had my daughter read it to me this week. I really like that. I think I'm just going to pick a different person every week to reread it out loud to me because it was, I don't know if it was because it was coming from my child or some of it just felt like I've never read this before. It was really interesting. I how Joseph not do it every week. <laughs> I bet he would do it. We rarely make it through the book, though. I was going to say, <laughs> but, but I, I knew we were being recorded, so I didn't say that. <laughs> I never will. It's all guys. about unity, guys. <laughs> you're, you're saying you read it to each other in bed, and that's the problem? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about we have to be in bed, Alex. Oh. Well, I didn't hear you, so I just had, I needed. Well, you know, book. there's topics in there that are not, that are not like, super great um, lovey-dovey pillow talk. Like my daughter read read it and at one point looked at me and said, what does fully emasculate mean? And I was like- <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's, that's the part yeah, that I was thinking. Yeah, let's explain that. So she was like, so I simply told her, I just told her very simply and plainly and she goes, gross. And then kept reading. <laughs> <laughs> the primary problem that Paul is addressing is the Galatians trying to follow the laws while also um, having faith in Jesus. And Paul is saying, basically, um, you, you can't do both. That's the, the whole point. An analogy of how basically you were slaves under the law. You were slaves that had some purpose and there was some good that happened to slave, but you weren't free as children. And now you are free as children. As N.T. Wright points out, he's specifically using the word son, not to be gender un uninclusive, but to give the the picture that they would have understood, which was the son was the one who inherited it all. The son was the one who had the authority. And Paul is saying, that's what you've been given in Christ. And now you're trying to go back to uh, being those slaves. So he says, why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. Some of his own words here, but what in your own words would you say is the purpose of the law. And as N.T. Wright points out, and as the Bible Project video points out, there's several words that law can mean. It can mean the whole of the law and the prophets. Um, it can mean the specific set of 600 plus rules. Like the Bible Project video says, it's it's the Torah is a story and and, and within it are, are, uh, are these laws. But are you uh, proposing that Paul is really talking about the rules or is he talking about the whole Ju Judaic way of life thing? It's hard to separate just the laws from, from the, the culture because it involved their everyday living yeah. practices from the time they got up to the time they went to bed and all these events. So I don't think you can really separate them. Uh, Paul says that the law is good. Uh, Jesus says it's not going to be uh, uh, abolished. Um, Hope is asking, what was the purpose of it? My question is, if it's good, uh, can we talk about what was good about the law as opposed mm -hmm. to what's bad about it? Like, is there any, is what, why exactly was it good? And, and I mean, the way Paul puts it, it was just sort of the, uh, we were locked up under sin through the law. And that doesn't sound very good. It just sounds like we were in timeout or something. Um, but is, is there actually anything good about it or is it just some horrible yoke that we have to throw off? It shows the heart of God, which is good things for his people. And I think that uh, the law helped people to walk in holiness. It helped them to be set apart. We know that it helped them to be fruitful and multiply and avoid a lot of diseases and be a people that, um, you know, observe things like germs thousands of years before they were discovered um so i think it helped the the children of abraham stay holy and set apart until the fulfillment of the covenant and it also helped to show them the importance of love and when they're surrounded by neighboring cultures which were literally sacrificing their children um mm -hmm. it set them apart as a people who who valued loving and value now, do you think life under the law or or under the torah uh if if they if they could have like lived it better, would that have, was that a good life or was it just sort of a tedious, burdensome life? Mm, I think it's a good life. Yeah, it's a I think life. it's 
it's a lot about God being a good dad, like being a good parent. And it's really interesting to look at the, look at our faith as a child that's growing. You don't have to tell your child every second of every day, don't do this or you're going to get hurt. Do this. This is what we do. This is how we act. This is what we say. And, um, you eventually, they eventually can tie their own shoes. They can eventually initiate prayer. They can eventually um, have a heart of gratitude because you've been showing them and telling them how that is done. And so it's been kind of wild, really, for me to take a big step back and go, let's look at faith in the whole, like it's growing through time and maturing through time. And it's made me look at the Old Testament and the law of, um, versus the promise and the fulfillment of the promise and the fulfillment of the law in a completely different yeah. light. And here's a question. When, when Paul is laying down guidelines and rules to the, to the young Gentile churches, is in a sense, is he introducing uh, school-like law uh, like you guys need to know what's sin and what's not. In other words, is he applying law to them as new Christians, sort of like God applied law to spiritually less mature Israel? In a lot of ways, when Paul says, you guys need to do this, you need to do that, put on love, put off this, isn't it sort of like he's he's introducing, isn't he just sort of basically quoting Old Testament ethics and saying, you guys need to do this. Put it another way. Let, let's say that um, that hope is completely wrong. And that uh, and what Paul is saying is you don't have to be, embrace Jewish culture and life uh, to be in the kingdom. But you need law because you need to know ethics. And, and that's why Paul is constantly telling people how to behave. Uh, and, and if Paul is saying, oh, no, it's about faith and not works, then why is he telling everybody what to do all the time?